Does space travel affect or go against fulfilling the prophecy of the Antichrist? Uh, well, per personally, I don't believe space travel is a, is, is a thing. I don't think that. I, I am a flat earther. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't believe uh, the cosmology that's given to us. But even if you did, uh, that's fine. That I, I don't think it affects the prophecy of the Antichrist that says that the man of sin will, uh, and the false prophet will do, um, you know, lying signs and wonders. Uh, and when it says lying signs and wonders, that I, I think that suggests that they're, they're false miracles. Uh, you know, there may be some technological. Uh, you know, anything, I think uh, Arthur C. Clarke once said that anything that's sufficiently technologically advanced is uh, is is really uh, similar to magic. Um, something of that effect. Uh, and I think that's basically what, they, what the, the, the false prophet's miracles will be. They'll be, they will be um, false miracles. They will not, you know, I don't think they'll, they'll actually be, you know, uh, you know, bringing, drawing fire down from heaven. Uh, I think again, they'll just be technological uh, trickery, um, and uh, and so I think that's maybe where the question is coming from. They think that somehow space travel is makes that possible, or Antichrist is some kind of alien. Um, I, I I don't think so. Uh, I know a lot of people read into the the, the uh, alien phenomena as being played into the end times. It possibly could. I just don't see it in scripture. Uh, but it, it could be there, and, and I, I'm just not seeing it. Um, but I don't really know how else to add to that. Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. I'll, I'll let you guys take a shot at it. Okay. Uh, well, you said you, you don't believe in space travel. Well, I'll tell you, uh, not only do I not believe in space travel, but uh, I'm really even doubtful about this question of Antichrist. Um you know, I'm, I've got this playlist now that I'm asking everybody to take a, another look at on eschatology. Uh, and, uh, you know, and the only time the, the word Antichrist appears is in 1 John. And I, I, I believe that's that's talking, uh, first of all, there are many Antichrists. The, there, you will not find this term in, in the, the Bible at all, the Antichrist. Nowhere do you see the Antichrist. Uh, now, it's true that there are antichrists. There always have been. There always will be till the end of history. Uh, will there be, um, uh, was there a single antichrist? Uh, I, I think that uh, this man of lawlessness, this man of sin, perhaps that was Nero, uh, somebody in the first century. Uh, you'll have to think, you have to take a look at the uh, playlist. But I, I keep saying this, but I, I'm very doubtful that people are <clears throat> going to do it. Uh, people are so set in their ways <clears throat> with this, um, the, the popular uh, view of uh, end times in America today that they're, they're basically just settled and don't, will not consider that maybe you're wrong. Uh, but I did because see what, what we do here is we, we have taken on the position that, okay, we are willing to, try to answer questions. Well, a few years ago, I started to get a lot of questions about end times that were different than uh, the, the viewpoint I held, which is basically Garbyism, uh, uh, pre-tribulation rapture, pre-millennial return, a literal thousand year reign of Christ on earth. That was the position most people hold today in America, not worldwide, and not throughout all history, but in America today, that's the popular position. That's the position I held. I taught it and I defended it. Uh, but because people ask me questions about other things, other viewpoints in eschatology, I wasn't able to answer them. You know, I felt I had a responsibility. I, I better go learn about those so I can come up with an answer. So as I decided that I started studying all the other viewpoints, I found out that, well, there's other interpretations of Revelation in end times that, that are really are much older and much more prominent throughout church history and even in the world today. And as I studied them, my viewpoint changed. But um, there very well may be some world leader come up uh, in the end of history and a one world government, as we've been uh, led to believe, that very well may be the case. Uh, but uh, so, but 
So as far as Antichrist, I can't really say that uh, space travel is going to have any effect on if there's a world leader uh, that's uh, evil and leads us into the end of the world. But what about space travel? Well, same thing. I, I don't believe space travel. I think we've got, uh, we live on a plane, not a planet, and it's covered with a dome, the firmament, and uh, it's stationary, not moving through space. Uh, I have a playlist, um, Flat Earth, Could It Be True? Uh, and so check that out. And I didn't change my mind on either of these viewpoints easily. It took me more than a year of studying and, 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 and uh, be, to, before I was, uh, I really didn't want to change my mind. Who wants to believe that there's, the earth is flat? I mean, you're, all you're doing is open yourself up to ridicule. <laughs> no one wants to believe that. And who wants to take a different viewpoint on end times than the popular view that everybody holds? Now, now they think you're, well, he's crazy or he's, uh, or he's a heretic or whatever. So you, uh, you really shouldn't uh, be quick to change your mind. Uh, like uh, what's the verse? Um, um, every, uh, every wind of doctrine. No, I'm, I, I don't change with, with every wind of doctrine, but I want to know about all the different possible answers to every doctrinal question instead of just believing the first one I was taught and, and defending it for as I did for 25 years. So uh, this question really doesn't apply to uh, to me as far as either space travel or the Antichrist. Uh, and uh, so we'll leave it up to you, Renee. Oh, boy, I'm the lone wolf, I guess. Uh, I am not a flat earther. I, I wish I could believe it because I'd stop getting emails of how I'm so deceived and refuse to see the truth. Uh, I got too many problems with it scientifically. Uh, there's questions that cannot be answered and the, and it, the math, the, the physics don't add up. It doesn't work. Um, and I tried. I've researched everything I can for over a year and uh, just cannot get there. So uh, my son and I, regarding space, my son and I, we have a gigantic telescope here. His grandfather got him and uh, keeps buying more and more lenses and stuff. So we're always looking at the rings of Saturn and uh, uh, the galaxies that are close enough to see. And it's beautiful. It's mind blowing. Uh, I don't believe we're going to be traveling in space. Uh, I do believe um, that they sent those little rovers. Uh, to Mars, and we're seeing it just looks like a big old desert with nothing there, which is biblical. I mean, there's no evidence, not that God couldn't put life on other planets. I just don't think he did because uh, when we fell, then they would have fallen because all of creation groans for redemption. Uh, and that wouldn't have been right. And then uh, as far as uh, Antichrist, uh, Luke's right. Uh, there is no mention of the Antichrist in scripture. It just says Antichrist, and it's not capitalized. It says, as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know it's the last time. Uh, and I think people give the term Antichrist to the, the man of sin that's to be revealed, um, the son of perdition. And I think they put them all together and they call him the Antichrist, but he's right. The Antichrist is not there. Um, uh, and I would think Antichrist would be, could be a religious figure. Like I believe the Pope is an Antichrist because he's a replacement of Christ and he speaks against Christ. He even said he didn't bodily rise, but had a semblance of the spirit resurrection. So um, I, as far as space travel, I don't know what space travel would have anything to do with it. Uh, I am a round earther. Um, you know, uh, my son is constantly looking at satellite photos and, and pictures of the earth from the international space station. Um, you know, you can have a live stream, you can watch it live. So he likes all that stuff. And I happen to be into it a little more than most because of my son's interest. Uh, and either way, it doesn't, I mean, it all glorifies God to me. The vastness of space glorifies God. Um, and as far as like this, the space thing, what the only thing Ben was, I, I could see what Ben was talking about 
that I could see in the last days is where they say there there's a coming great deception with lying signs and wonders in the heavens. And so I think a lot of people equate that to this alien thing with these, these fallen angels, these spiritual wickedness in high places, these UFO things, they are spiritual. Even secular researchers have called them messengers of deception because they have comparable accounts of medieval demonic attacks and they equal the fairy abductions of Scotland and Ireland. It's the same thing that's been happening for thousands of years that's been reported. It's not intergalactic space travelers. They're just spiritual wickedness. Um, real born again believers have gotten saved and these alien things try to come back and abduct them and they use the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus and these things back off. It's the only thing that stops this abduction experience. So I believe there is some deception to it. They teach a new age or Eastern mysticism type religion to people. They are evangelizing people away from Christ. So in that sense, I think it is an end times deception. Um, but uh, I don't know how much of that has to do with uh, an antichrist in the last days. Uh, I, I, I kind of feel, I'm going to lean a little bit with Luke. I feel we are looking for things that aren't going to happen. Um, like two, two witnesses are represented as two people in the book of Revelation, but these entities are represent two things not two actual people so it's 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 bad because revelation is a vision and in the vision people represent objects or events because that's how it's playing out in the vision for him to understand a long story the beginning of god's people to the end of god's people it's the story of god's people from beginning to end and so people have taken some of these things too literally instead of in the spirit they were meant to be given and um, using the Bible to interpret these symbols. So I think there's some things we're going to look for that aren't actually coming. And um, it's possible because we've been brainwashed this whole space visitor thing since the 1940s uh, in movies and magazines and stuff. And whenever there's that much propaganda, I can't help but think it has something to do with the deception. So sure, uh, in that sense, it can be to deceive and take people away from the Bible and belief in God. But as far as space travel, I don't even think there's anything really planned uh, for man to go anywhere. So I, I don't I don't see how that would affect in times deception at all like space travel i don't i don't think so okay uh this uh, the results of this question i find interesting because it's a two-part question antichrist and space travel and um i said no to both basically uh doubtful doubtful about this antichrist uh the way we understand antichrist and doubtful about this uh, space travel. But Ben and Renee were split on these. Ben, ben said yes to the, uh, uh, the space travel and flat earth, but no to the antichrist uh, position I have. And Renee took the opposite position. I, you know, I probably agree with Luke more on the antichrist question at end times, but on the space travel or flat earth, the flat earth thing is I disagree. So it was pretty interesting how we were all, all very positions on this, but uh, it was it's interesting to hear everybody's opinions. But um, I'm really uh, eager to um, we're going to do a a program. I don't know how soon it'll be. Maybe it'll be a matter of weeks or months, but sometime fairly soon, Renee and I are going to do a program on end times, uh, and uh, it, it may take at least one or, or more uh, live streams uh, to, to do it. There's there's so much to it. Uh, but uh, 
Uh, Renee is getting close to some conclusions, I think, and I'm, I'm almost completely settled uh, on, on my co conclusions now. So we'll, we'll be doing that, but I, I, I hope that people will, um, I keep saying this, but it's, it's rare. It's one, it's one of my greatest disappointments is that, uh, and I, I don't really want to think of myself as being some special person that I have a virtue that everyone lacks, but it, it seems that most people don't have much curiosity. Uh, for me, if someone tells me I'm wrong or that, hey, what, you, what about this viewpoint is, that disagrees with your, your position on whatever, whatever subject you're talking about, whatever your position is, someone says, oh, I see it differently. Are you curious? Do you want to learn about their position? Do you want to consider that maybe they're right and maybe I'm wrong? Maybe I have to learn about it so I can, because there is a chance I'm wrong. For, at least I'll admit it. Can, I don't, can you admit there's a chance you might be wrong about some things? Well, I realize I've been wrong in the past on some things, been forced to change my mind a few times. And uh, so I realize that hey, maybe I'm still wrong on some things, likely I am. But that's why I, I really am interested in hearing different points of view. So when it comes to eschatology, most people are not familiar with what I am talking about. I'm talking about in the most, the most basic uh, way with something that might take 50 hours to explain and, and, and understand in, in depth the entire subject. Uh, but I'm trying to answer it in five minutes. So obviously I can just tell you enough to, to make you think that's he's crazy. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm surprised most, most people are, are not uh, as curious as I am and eager to study other viewpoints on, on things because uh, maybe you're wrong. Okay. Well, it makes you feel better. I, 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 uh, I am curious, very curious. And I, and I have watched uh, some Bruce Gore videos. I've watched a couple hours already. So just, that that makes I'm, glad to, I'm glad to hear that. And, and even Bruce Gore as, as, uh, I have 53 of his videos in his series. And by the way, I just found out after getting through all 53 of them now that uh, his series isn't even completed yet. He's only on now beginning Revelation chapter 20. So I'm not sure what he's going to say about 20, 21, 22, but I'm really, you know, I'm waiting now. It's like waiting for the next week's uh, uh, program to continue the story. Um, but, uh, uh, as I've been watching it, I find out that, well, he's a Calvinist and he's, he has some uh, lordship viewpoints, too, that would, we would disagree with. Uh, but uh, that doesn't mean that he's wrong about everything else in theology. And, you know, I'm, I, we're all right about some things, wrong about some things. I, 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 I hope everybody can at least admit that. But uh, so I'm not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater and say that, well, I can't listen to Bruce Gore because uh, I don't agree with him on uh, some other things. But when it comes to eschatology, uh, I, I've listened to, if you read the description box uh, on the playlist I have, you'll see there are links to all the different um, um, teachers that I've listened to go through Revelation verse by verse as a comparison, all the different ways you people interpret and understand it. So a lot of time has been put in, but I would say that I'm much more in line now with his view than, than any of the others. You know, Ray? Yeah, uh, I was just going to say, regardless of your opinion on the earth shape, uh, I think it's important that we don't start saying, well, I believe the Bible because flat earthers and round earthers both believe the Bible. I do not believe the Bible specifically says the flat earth is flat. But I believe I used to use the Bible to show atheists, see, the circle of the earth. God knew the earth was round before man did. Like, I, I believe it's a sphere. And I think I and and when I looked at flat earth, I listened to both sides. So before you make a decision on where you stand, I would suggest you take the equal amount of time in videos and evidence and science and math and physics that refute flat earth and refute ball earth looking at evidence for both sides because a lot of times we get excited something convinces us a video is very clever it's showing us all the evidence but then later on we realize there's all this evidence over here we didn't look at 
So before you make an informed decision on what you believe, look at both. And I, I don't think it's accurate to say, well, I believe uh, uh, this because I believe the Bible. And those that don't agree with me don't believe the Bible. I do believe the Bible and you believe the Bible, but we both see something different in the artistic language that is used in the descriptions. So just because I don't believe in flat earth does not mean that I reject what scripture says. I do not believe the Bible says it's flat. So um, I, I want to be clear on this. This has been an issue for what, four years now on my channel. I want us to be kind to each other and at least have an understanding of why other people believe as they do. That's why I think it's always good to hear all the, if you make a huge decision like this to change your whole idea on cosmology, you need to go and look at all of the scientific evidence and biblical evidence and whatever else of the other side that disagrees with you. So that you can know both and make an informed decision and whatever decision you make, you will also have an understanding of why others may disagree with you without thinking that they're blind or they don't believe the Bible or whatever, you know, so that we can be kinder to one another um, on this issue. I think that's very important. Amen. Uh, I, I want to reemphasize that point, sister. Uh, there, there's two things that I'm, I'm going to try to uh, express that I think are really important. One, I just said, let's be willing to study opposing points of view with an open mind because maybe our current position is wrong. Okay, I, I don't need to repeat that again. But once we do to come to a conclusion, no matter how convinced we are that we're right now, when we when we disagree with each other. Uh, we need to be uh, as uh, nice as we possibly can. I mean, uh, we need to go out of our way to express our disagreement as tactfully, diplomatically as possible. We don't. We should not be pushing and uh, you know, going back and forth or trying to be the winner of an argument. It's, it's good for each person to be able to express a viewpoint. Now you've got there are plenty of viewpoints everybody can to consider, and you can all look into it further. But to think, I got well, I got to, I got to push more because I'm I'm right, and I got to make sure everybody agrees with me. Well, the the reason CES has been held together, at least part of us, <laughs> Renee and I have been here since the, the beginning, uh, but. Uh, the, the, the reason we've been able to do this program now for over three years is because uh, almost every time we have a conversation, we have either a clear disagreement or a slight disagreement. And, and every time we disagree, we do it tactfully, as politely as we can. But I don't see that in normal conversations and I certainly don't see it in this chat room and other chat rooms where people are just too blunt. I mean, come on. I mean, do you, do you ever stop to think of how you express your disagreement? Could it be offensive to the other person? I mean, you really, before you say that someone else is wrong, think about how can I express it the best way I can so I'm not hurting their feelings or offending them. I want to be, I want to remain friends. I don't want to lose a lose a friendship over, over over this disagreement but i don't see people making that effort for the most part unfortunately uh it's getting it's time for us to finish up now though so no, no more questions but uh uh ben or ray any more before we uh, start doing our, our summaries okay all right uh well renee would you would you be willing to give the good news for the for the world proclaim it i'd be happy to okay all right then ben let's start with with you if uh and, and give us your uh, summary on the uh the discussion today well it was a good set of questions and a great set of answers i uh, really enjoyed it um but more than anything i just like being with uh, i love just being fellowship with, with everyone everyone in chat and uh on the panel um uh, i really look forward to these um get-togethers 
Okay, great. This is uh, Sunday, so I guess uh, we don't have anything next uh, to do until um, Wednesday. It's nice for Brother Ben to get a break on Mondays and Tuesdays. You're like his days off now <laughs> for for producing programs. So Ben, enjoy enjoy a couple of days break. Hope you have a great break and time with your family. Uh, Renee, uh, why don't you give us your summary and uh, and then the gospel message? Yeah, I'm I'm always glad when people um, bring up questions on salvation, but especially about verses. I think outer darkness was something that bothers a lot of uh, Christians studying scripture. Um, and I think if you gather all those verses together, you'll see there's a common theme there. Pharisaical unbelievers. Um, and... Well, it's a weird questions too. So I appreciate uh, all of them. Uh, and Robbie Zacharias used to say, you know, behind every question is a questioner. And I noticed that some people are kind enough, uh, like our brother down in Australia, to send uh, questions that he sees other people asking on channels, which helps us a lot. It helps us see through their eyes, the questioner behind the question. Uh, and so we're able to have an answer for the hope we have and the security we have, like Peter tells us to. So I appreciate all the questions. Um, the first one we got was about what was accomplished on the cross. So I will give you the gospel that way. Now the Bible says that we are saved by God's grace through the vehicle of faith. Notice that faith is the vehicle by which we get something. It's not what saves us. The object of our salvation is Jesus Christ's death, burial, and glorious resurrection. And because he died for our sins, he was buried and three days later rose again, it proves that his blood was accepted as payment for mankind's sin and that we had been reconciled to God. And because he rose from the dead, we will too. He's the first fruits of the resurrected. So everything in the scripture points to Jesus from Genesis to revelation. It's all Jesus. And our faith is not religion. Religion is man trying to work their way to pleasing God. But we couldn't. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God. There's not one righteous, no, not one. And even worse than that, all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags to God. That's our best. So not to mention our sin, how horrible that must be. But the good news is we, we can't get there by works, but there is a way to get there. And it's through the shed blood of Jesus. It's why Jesus is the only way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but by him. He is the door we enter. He is the straight gate. So we get in through him and what he has done. And when the Bible says, by grace are you saved through faith, it is not of yourselves. It's the gift of God. What's the gift of God? That you're saved. By grace are you saved. It's the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. If it was of works, we could go around boasting about how I got into heaven because I did this and I did that nobody's going to glory in his presence. We only get to heaven. We only get eternal life and immortality, literal immortality in a literal physical body because of what Jesus has done. And that is the greatest news ever. All he asks you to do is trust in him. And once you do that, you're sealed by the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit dwells within you and he guides you to live your life and you'll have more abundant life and purpose 
through Jesus. So on top of eternal life, in this physical life here, you'll also have a relationship with God and purpose for your life. So pretty good deal. Best news ever. Amen. Yeah. It's gospel translates to good news, but I think it should be translated as the greatest news ever. Amen. All right. Uh, thanks to everybody uh, for participating today. Uh, uh, don't forget to join us Wednesday, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time on the same channel for the Wednesday Night Bible Study. We're studying the book of Philippians, and that's uh, a book that teaches us how to keep our joy no matter what we're going through. Thank you, everybody, and bless you all in the name of our great Savior, God, Jesus.